morning and welcome to St. James's on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost and our celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 2. The opening acclamation is on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be you, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. We will read from Psalm 34 verses 9 through 14, responsively by half verse, on page 628 in the Book of Common Prayer. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. Come, children, and listen to me. Who among you loves life? And life Keep your tongue from evil speaking. And words. Turn from evil and do good.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jewish opposition then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. One time I went to a retreat at a monastery. I was in the middle of one of those dry spells where God seemed very far away from me or I felt very far away from God. And I felt that my spiritual well had run dry. So it wasn't just rest and prayer that I needed. I needed to reconnect and experience the divine as something real again. I needed sustenance. And I really didn't know what to do. So I sat with one of the brothers and confessed my spiritual dryness and asked for help. Monks are great in situations like this. They don't look at you in horror and ask, what's wrong with you, you religious professional? Or clearly you are failing or not cut out for this calling. No, they nod sagely. They understand spiritual dryness. They understand the distressing disconnection that can happen between you and God in the midst of real life. And they don't offer up some platitude like, just trust God and all will work out, or ask you if you've prayed about it. Duh. (laughs) Now, the brother assigned me an art project. I looked at him with one eyebrow raised, but he meant it. Upstairs in the library, I would find a sketch pad and some colored pencils. Maybe I could draw an expression of my feelings or my situation. Right. I felt like a first grader. So I spent a long time not going upstairs to the library before I decided that since I really was distressed, to give it a try. After all, trying to think my way out had not worked. So I let my colored pencil range around on the paper for a bit, and then, I don't know, I kind of got into it. What I ended up with was a simple drawing, because I'm not an artist, of a heart locked in a cave. There was a yellow light coming out of the cave, and it was dark all around the outside of the cave. And across the entrance was a portcullis, one of those medieval-looking gates on a castle. 
I didn't know if it was my heart that was locked up or if it was God that was locked up or whether something was locked in or I was locked out. But either way, it seemed like a fair representation of how I was feeling. I looked at it for a long time. The next morning, I went into the chapel for the service of Holy Eucharist. I got there a few minutes early and sat gazing at the beautiful marble altar, which is situated under an arched marble canopy supported by marble columns. The technical term for that is baldekin for you church architecture nerds. And as my eyes rested upon it, I became aware of how much it looked like that cave that I had drawn in my simple picture, that cave that held the heart, that cave that held the light. I stared at it with comprehension dawning. I don't remember what the lessons were that morning, nor do I recall the sermon. What I do remember was a sudden, intense desire for the bread that sat on that altar. I could hardly wait for the celebrant to finish the Eucharistic prayer and give me that bread. Tears ran down my cheeks. It was the bread that is the connection, and it is the bread that is the sustenance, and all I had to do was put out my hands and receive it. Taking that bread into my body was how I would become one with Christ. Something I knew in my head all along, I learned that long ago, but it was suddenly something that I was experiencing anew in real life. And continuing to receive it at every Eucharist, every Sunday, and some weekdays was how God would sustain me in my wilderness. It was God's promise, I will be with you, made good and made real. I could touch it. I could taste it. I could eat it. We all end up in the wilderness sometimes, rocked by a sudden death, a scary diagnosis, strung out from work or family strife, exhausted from constant political and social drama, suffering grief or loneliness, feeling angry a lot. We can find ourselves bewildered, lost, disconnected. And when that happens, we long to reconnect and experience the divine, to be sustained amid whatever it is that saps us of the life abundant that Jesus wants for us. Thomas Aquinas called the Eucharist spiritual food and spiritual medicine. St. Ignatius called it medicine for immortality. Medieval people were known to sneak communion bread out of church and keep it at home for protection from the plague and other evils, which was frowned upon by the church as a superstitious practice. But there is great power in the Eucharistic meal. Like medicine, it is meant to be taken into our bodies, to become part of us, and to strengthen us. Jesus said that that is how we abide in God, and God abides in us. St. Augustine thought that the priest should say this after breaking the bread, behold what you are, become what you receive. Which is incidentally what they say at the monastery after the bread is broken at that altar. Jesus meets us wherever we are and whenever we come to the altar to receive, even if we come in bewilderment. This is to me the most beautiful part. I have a priest friend named David Henson who put it this way, the bread of life doesn't come to us whole, untouched or unscathed by the world. Instead, it comes to us broken, fractured, 
We don't come to this table unbroken either. We come feeling fractured, sometimes torn apart by the sorrows of life. The body of Christ is broken because we are. The blood of Christ is poured out because we are. In the midst of our questions, our anger at the injustice in the world, Christ simply says, me too. I'm here. I've been forsaken. I've been wounded. Here I am broken too. This is why we do this every week. This is our connection. Behold who you are. Become what you receive. Touch it and taste it and let it course through your body to sustain and heal you. Come to the altar and experience the promise of life made good and made real. Let's stand and affirm our feet from the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is in the We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of all, God from God, light from light, true God from God, begotten of one of one being in the Father, through him all for us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became our conversion and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and spirit. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the truth. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism. We look for the resurrection of and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 383 of the Book of Common. Please stand or kneel if you are able. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. 
for the aged and infirm, for the widows and the poor, and for the sick and the suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have asked for our prayers, John and Mary, Amy, Webb, Mary, especially Nadine Green and Carol White, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, James our patron, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning to you all and welcome. I'm so glad to see you here this Sunday. Next week is a very special day. Uh, It's our last celebration with Amelia and there will be a wonderful party for her after the service and I hope that you will all stay and and celebrate with her. Um, Katie uh, Ricard has been 
organizing for our little reception, and, uh, and if you would like to help with that, please let Katie know. There's all kinds of things in your bulletin about what's coming up, um, so I hope that you will read that. You'll see a September schedule. We're getting ready to go into the program year, and so there are all kinds of things that will be coming up, and including um, later in September, there'll be a ministry fair in which we will give you the opportunity to say what it is that you would like to be doing as part of your ministry here. Um, all of us baptized Christians have a ministry, and it's wonderful for when you can do that in the church as well as out in the community. So if there's something that you would be interested in, in doing, please do let us know about that and more formal opportunity to do all, uh, sign up for that will be coming in September. Anyway, but stay tuned by way of the e-chimes and our website. That's where all the news is. So welcome again. It's glad that you're here. Let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips, which acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
At this time, any children who are in the congregation who might want to come closer to the celebration of Holy Eucharist are invited to do that. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Be with Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin, you became subject to evil and death. You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please stand and join in praying our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and the blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.